Hi students, today we are going to discuss Davison and the Germer experiment which has explained the diffraction of electrons. Also, it explains the particle and wave nature of electrons. The particle wave duality of an electron. This experimental arrangement consists of a tungsten filament which is coated with barium oxide. This filament is heated by a low tension battery. So when the filament is heated, it emits electrons due to thermionic emission. These electrons are negatively charged particles. They are collimated, they are collimated through two aluminium diaphragms. These aluminium diaphragms are circular aluminium plates having pin holes at the center through which the electrons are collimated and they are allowed to pass through a aluminium cylinder, an aluminium cylinder having a hole at its axis which is connected to the positive potential of a high tension battery. So, the electrons emitted by the filament after being collimated by the two aluminium diaphragms they are accelerated, they are pulled, they are accelerated and they attain a sufficient energy through that hole they will come out. So these accelerated electrons are coming out of the aluminium cylinder and they attain a sufficient wavelength. So now they are behaving like waves and they are incident on a nickel crystal. Anyhow, this arrangement consisting of the low tension battery, the filament, the aluminium diaphragms and this aluminium cylinder together is called as the electron gun. Just like the bullets are fired from the gun, here electrons are fired from this arrangement. So this arrangement is called electron gun. The electrons emitted by the electron gun are accelerated and then these accelerated electrons are allowed to be incident on a nickel crystal. So these electrons, when they fall on the atoms of the nickel crystal, they get scattered in different directions. They get scattered in different directions. Only one such a direction is shown in the picture and this is the angle theta which is called the angle of scattering. So the angle between the incident direction and the scattered direction theta is called the angle of scattering. This uh, scattering effect is due to the particle nature of the electron. Okay students, actually according to De Broglie, these uh, accelerated electrons, uh, they behave like waves, they are called as electron waves. When these electron waves are incident in the space, okay, they are incident on the nickel crystal between the, the space between any two atoms acts like a slit for the electron waves. As a result, they undergo diffraction also. So these diffracted waves traveling in a particular direction, after diffraction, they undergo constructive and destructive interference. As a result, they form a diffraction pattern. They form a diffraction pattern. Anyhow, in this experiment, the angle of scattering and the angle of diffraction both are almost one and the same. Okay. So the scattered as well as the diffracted electrons, uh, we can use either diffracted electrons or scattered electrons. Both are one and the same in this experiment. And uh, after scattering, uh, the electrons uh, are allowed to enter inside. Uh, a electron detector. This electron detector is uh, an ionization chamber. It is uh, an ionization chamber. So inside this ionization chamber, any gas can be filled. Any gas can be filled and some electrodes will be present such that when these scattered electrons having sufficient energy will enter inside this ionization chamber, the gas present inside this uh, detector will be ionized and ionization current will be produced and that ionization current can be measured with the help of a, a microammeter or a galvanometer. So this current is a measure of the intensity. The ionization current is a measurement of the intensity produced due to the scattered uh, electron B. Okay students. And also this uh, Electron detector can move, can move over a circular scale like this. 
which is calibrated in degrees. So that uh, the angle of scattering uh, corresponding to maximum intensity or minimum intensity can be measured. Okay. So this angle of uh, scattering uh, can be measured over a circular scale. And the intensity which is uh, measured by the electron detector is in terms of in terms of the ionization current. Okay. So in this experiment, uh, we plot a graph. We plot a graph between the intensity of the diffracted X-rays versus uh, the angle of scattering. So I am going to draw a graph now. So a graph is drawn by taking uh, the intensity, by taking the intensity of uh, the diffracted uh, electron beam. So this is uh, the intensity taken along the y-axis and here theta, the angle of scattering is taken along the x-axis. So this is taken uh, in multiples of 30, 60, 90. So this is a 30 degree, this is a 60 degree and this is a 90 degree. Along this axis is the theta, that is the angle of scattering. And it is found that the nature of the graph, the nature of the graph will be like this. So corresponding to, corresponding to 50 degree, somewhere around 50 degree, the intensity is maximum. Uh, already I told you that the intensity is in terms of the ionization current. So the ionization current is found to be maximum corresponding to an angle of scattering theta is equal to 50 degree. And this experiment uh, was conducted for an accelerating voltage, 54 volt. So it can be varied from, uh, from 40 or 44 to 68, 70 volt. Uh, but uh, this observation and this graph has been drawn for an accelerating potential difference of a 54 volt corresponding to an angle of scattering of a 50 degree. So this is a theta is equal to 50 degree. The intensity is found to be maximum. So using uh, uh, the formula 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda. This formula is called as Bragg's formula for X-ray diffraction, diffraction of X-rays. Now, for the same formula can be used uh, for the diffraction of the electron waves also, where this uh, D is uh, the distance between any two atoms. It is called interatomic spacing. Interatomic spacing. So, in the nickel crystal, if you take the different uh, layers uh, of uh, the crystal, the atoms will be arranged in a three dimensional pattern like this. Uh, okay, the atoms are arranged in a three dimensional pattern so that this is the distance. Uh, he called us interatomic spacing. So when uh, the electron waves enter inside this space uh, which acts as, as a slit, uh, then it undergoes diffraction. So the diffraction uh, explains uh, the wave nature of the electrons while scattering explains the particle nature of the electrons. Uh, here both are one and the same only. Diffraction and scattered electrons both are one and the same. Anyhow, using this expression, uh, the de Broglie wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength of the electron waves was measured, where n is the order of diffraction. First order diffraction means n is equal to 1, second order means n is equal to 2. Like that, uh, it was found that uh, lambda is uh, equal to 0.165 nanometer or lambda is equal to 1.65 angstrom unit. So in this experiment corresponding to a value of theta equal to 50 degree, okay, it was found that the wavelength of uh, the uh, electron waves uh, measured is lambda equal to 1.65 angstrom unit or 0.165 nanometer. But according to de Broglie, we have studied the de Broglie wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength of uh, this uh, material particles uh, is given by what uh, lambda is equal to 12.27 divided by square root of V angstrom unit. I have written an angstrom unit. So it is found that it is 1.67 angstrom unit. Or if you write this uh, is in terms of nanometer, it is 1.227 by square root of V nanometer. So in nanometer, it is uh, found that uh, it is equal to 0 0.167 nanometer so that uh, if you compare the uh, experimentally determined value it is uh, 
agreeing with the, the same number you see 1.65 angstrom unit and 1.67 angstrom unit so the J davison and the germers experiment has calculated the wavelength of the x-rays as 1.65 angstrom unit whereas uh, de broglie wavelength calculation method if you go means it is found that 1.67 angstrom unit so both are very nearly one and the same so this experiment confirms that uh, the electrons uh, behave like waves uh. so the particle as well as the wave duality of the electron has been proved by this Davison and Germer experiment. Now one more information I am going to tell you here. When these electrons are accelerated by a voltage of 54 volt, the waves associated with the electrons are only called as electron waves. And these electron waves, if you compare with that of the X-rays, both the X-rays as well as the electron waves are having a similar wavelengths or same wavelength. But the X-rays uh, cannot be uh, focused. So, the X-rays cannot be focused by ordinary lenses. That is why they cannot be used in the construction of electron microscope. The basic idea of this experiment is the construction of uh, the transmission electron microscope. That is the next topic in your textbook. So, in advance, I am telling you that this wave nature of electrons is used in the construction of a transmission uh, electron microscope where these uh, electron waves are focused so transmission electron microscope also another type of microscope also can be constructed a scanning electron microscope a scanning electron microscope so these two microscopes are uh, having an underlying principle of the wave nature of electrons. So X-rays also have the same wavelength as that of these electrons, whereas X-rays cannot be focused by electric and magnetic lenses. These electrons can be focused by both electric and magnetic lenses. This is the idea. So Davison and the Germer experiment has uh, given a clue for the construction of these two types of uh, microscopes. Okay students, once again I am highlighting this experiment. The Davison and Germer experiment is used to study the diffraction of electrons. It proves uh, the particle wave duality of the electron and uh, the application of Davison and Germer experiment is in the construction of uh, the electron microscope. Hope you must have understood. Thank you.